Welcome to the second video on flow triggers. Here I will give you a broader selection of triggers that you can stack and use to bring all of your attention here and now. So let's go with number one, which is complete concentration. Flow follows your attention. So wherever you are fully engaged, your flow states will be present. And your minimum requirement to do so is to block out time for yourself to get in your bubble and single task, free of distractions and interruptions. Ideally, you want to devote 90 to 120 minutes to your task, up to four hours, although I understand that sometimes life may restrict your time frame. With practice, you can get in the zone very quickly and accomplish a lot within 30 minutes. Number two is high consequences environments. And this is when you get a big adrenaline rush by taking risks and getting into dangerous situations. In many instances, you need to be so present and alert that otherwise it means uh, a knockout, an injury, sometimes a very fatal one called death. Another form of taking risk is to expose yourself socially such as when you give performances, when you give talks, when you are breaking the norms in creative and intellectual fields by bringing new ideas and concepts forward, which are sometimes too bold to handle for the majority of people and can have high consequences such as rejection and humiliation. Public failures aren't for the faint-hearted, yet public success is highly rewarding. Number three, uh, is deep embodiment and this is when all of your mind your body and your senses are engaged uh, leading us to pay more attention to the task at hand this is especially true regarding intense practices like extreme sports martial arts and high impact team sports another form would be to embody a character before giving a public performance as an example, I needed to embody a very aggressive persona before competing. Otherwise, I wouldn't get the juice to go and do my run. Uh, the, I wouldn't get the blood flow delivered to my muscles. Uh, the adrenaline would stagnate and I would paralyze before riding. The fourth one is creative triggers. Uh, that's when we are innovating, pioneering and bringing new ideas into light. We're deeply involved in reading on new topics, exploring new disciplines, expanding our field of knowledge and learning to think and move differently. Recognizing new patterns and linking new ideas together is a great way to remain fully present. Make pioneering one of your strengths as it is one of the best way ever to stand out from anyone else in your field. Think like Bruce Lee and his Yi Kune Do technique. Now, number five is immediate feedback and it is telling us how to do things better. You can do that by having a coach or a training partner with whom you share information and create challenges to assess your current skill level. Another way to get immediate feedback is to film yourself as you are learning new movements to make sure that you are performing properly. These are some of the most efficient ways to progress at a quick pace. Sixth on the list is autonomy. And this is when you experience the freedom of thoughts and choices and you are naturally driven to pursue something. That is another key aspect of getting deep in the zone. Another one, number seven, is the challenge skill balance. You want to challenge yourself slightly above your current level. Stephen Cutler talks about a range of 4% difficulty increase, although some people like hardcore challenges and will go as far as ramping it up by 15, 20, 30%. Whatever keeps you motivated, that is not too easy that you become bored, nor too hard that you become stressed and overwhelmed. Also, a good way to make your challenges more accessible is to dissect and break them down. You are creating small victories and micro progressions, which are good ways to keep moving forward and stay motivated. You will also need a certain level of confidence in your success 
uh, giving rise to an optimistic mindset. Also, you will need some skills in line with your task and the ability to handle pressure and delay gratification. These are some of the most classic flow triggers in the next video, I will share with you an extra list of personal triggers that I currently use and that I've used during my writing career.